Welcome to the Occupational Safety Leadership Podcast, episode number 70. And in today's episode, we're going to sit down and start to break down. This is going to be one of several episodes. Sit down and break down ISO 45001. Um, I've known a lot of people who have done it. I'm in the process of doing it myself. I think it's an awesome, fantastic thing. Um, But like all things, there's going to be some negative things too. And we'll sit down and talk about and not as in negative as in it's uh, it can't be done and all the rest. Um, Everybody talks about the rosiness and all that. But when um, you put a management system in place and certainly not just with ISO 45001, but if you did a ISO 9001, a 18,000, I mean, not uh, a 14,001 on the um, environmental side then um there's a culture change that takes place and sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's not so easy but let's sit down we'll just do a very brief introduction on this one here kind of talk about the plan do check act which most of us do every day in our life already we just don't literally break it down into a cycle and then we'll talk about um uh some of the key benefits that some of the people i've talked to have told me so that's just uh uh, get right into it. So in a nutshell, ISO 45001 uh, is going to be a management system then. So, And in this management system, it's, it's going to focus on occupational health and safety. And as any type of management system, it gives you a frame framework to identify, control, and minimize risks related to safety, uh, safety and health in the workplace. Um, it's very similar the way it really kind of does the plan, do, check, act. When we think about ISO 9001 uh, for quality on the environmental side, ISO 14001, ISO 45001 uh, specifically talks about occupational health and safety. So let's uh, break down the plan, do, check, act. Um, So when we sit down and we look at how we're going to implement things in the workplace, and many times the way that I implement my my things in my life, the way other people do sometimes, is the plan phase. We sit down and we're going to uh, plan exactly what we're going to do. In this case, for ISO 45001, the organization is going to look at the potential hazards, assess the risks out there, determine the controls, and how do you go back and mitigate those risks afterwards? In a perfect world, we've engineered out all the risks. Doesn't always happen. So now that you've identified the risks, what are you going to put in place to minimize those risks? It'd be awesome not to have them, but what are you you going to do to minimize that? So also when we talk about planning, we're going to define roles and responsibilities, uh, set up performance indicators out there too. Uh, Are you on track or or are you not on track? and, and these come in all shapes and sizes, these performance indicators. The do phase is you're going to actually sit down and, and do these. You're going to um, look at providing the resources, training employees, uh, executing those defined controls and measures out there. Um, and as part of it, of course, is that you make sure that everybody understands their role and responsibilities. And one of the big things they want in this standard is active participation in implementing the processes. Um, I can write a fantastic SOP f- from my cube. That doesn't mean it actually works. That just means that in, in my very brief overview, as I kind of walk the factory floor or walk through the chemical lab, I say, oh, we're going to do this. That doesn't mean that it actually works. You know, you always have to get the advice, input, everything you can, uh, hopefully even ownership from the people who actually work there and know these hazards. So I read about the hazards and I watch these things. It's not the same as working with this all day and all night then. So let's uh, continue on. The check, this is when you're going to go back and you're going to uh, look at your monitoring and measuring. Um, are you on track or not on track? This is where we're going to look at uh, inspections and data and evaluating the controls and measures out there. Finally, the act. We have to act on the results from the from the, um, the check phase. Maybe we're um, following the plan. Maybe we've met our goal. Maybe we fell short. Maybe we set a very low bar for the goal and we were literally done six months early 
because we really didn't understand how to really stretch ourselves as a uh, as a org out there, or did we uh, have way too much confidence and everybody worked super hard, and you still still didn't meet your goal, you know? And that's okay, but we're going to sit down, assess in the check phase, and then act on those on that assessment in the act phase. So that's the plan, do, check, act. So let's talk about some of the key features. And some of these are uh, ones that people have told me, and I kind of struggled to put it in words. And, and so I think I've, I think I've, um, I think I've come up with a good way to really describe this. So some of the key features of ISO 45001 is leadership and worker participation. So we've already talked about how that we really need to get input from the, uh, from um, the workers and all that. We also need to have leadership give you um, a commitment. And commitment is in the form of money, time, attitude. You know, attitude's really hard to say, well, how can I, how can I participate by attitude? Well, if, the, um, if leadership has the attitude of, well, we do what we can, but there's gonna be people who just get hurt. You know, we're gonna really, um, going to really try hard. We're not willing to spend money, but we're going to really try hard and see what we can do not to get somebody hurt. You know, that's, that's not that that's a bad attitude. It's better than, of course, actually not caring at all. But we really want to do everything we can not to get anybody hurt. And we want to go back once we identify a hazard, minimize that hazard. Ideal world, it's gone. We eliminate it, but we want to minimize it as much as we possibly can. We're going to look at a risk-based approach in this, which is a little bit different than before. Uh, OSHA has a lot of command and control, uh, but with this one, it's really a risk-based approach. And uh, just like just like when we had the worker uh, participation, we also need to get input from um, the workers on this. Um, and like uh, all times when you get input from the workers, you have to go back and add a little bit of sanity to this whole thing uh, also at the same time. Not that they don't come up with really good plans, but you have to sit down and really understand exactly um, help. You want to help guide them on what's realistic and what's not. So um, one time I was uh, I was looking at uh, implementing this uh, over at a very small factory and uh, so we did all the classes and when, when we came back we noticed that one group had whatever the operation was there was a serious chance of dying and when you really sat down and and broke it down they took a lot of the scenarios to the nth degree literally just scenarios um and and even office scenarios they said that you could be in your office and die, and that's because you were leaning back on your chair and hit your head when you fell down. That can happen, of course, you know, but when we kind of talk about the foreseeable and not foreseeable things, let's really focus on the foreseeable. So they even had that you could be using uh, the bathroom and, and die because you slipped and fell and hit your head on the sink when you were in the, in the bathroom, you know, I mean, that, it can happen, and it does happen, of course. It's extremely rare. So we want to sit down and, and look at adding some sanity into on the risk-based uh, based, uh, uh, approach to things. Continuous improvement. It would be awesome if we were perfect every time. But continuous improvement means that you're getting better at all times. Then. So in my own um work i've been doing uh safety for close to 30 years and the things i'm working on now are things that i that if you would have told me as a young safety professional i never would have got to this point because i i, I would have just laughed at all the big things out there but if you literally made a list of 100 things and every year you're knocking off the top four or five you're making things safer and you're making things better at some point, you, you, you really are just um, working on things that you never thought in your career that you would ever would ever get to. Because when you knock off a couple of things hot, high up on the list, well, that means that now the things that used to be a lower risk 
are now your higher your your highest risk and you're working on, on those things too so it's it's the um, continuous improvement out there um, I also found it was very easy uh, to integrate um, ISO 45001 to the already existing ones out there, the ISO 9001 and the 14001 for um, environmental management. Did it make it so uh, so scary? It wasn't this different animal. It was just basically, hey, workforce, we're already doing ISO 9001 and 14001. Here's how we're going to sit down and um, complement it. And look at the safety side at 45,001. So uh, with some of the places that I went to, it was really easy to do because it was just part of this is just how we operate. OK, we just add in safety, whereas other places that did not have ISO 9001 and 14,001, it was a little more difficult to get traction because it literally was something brand new, something that the people had not heard of. Um, and there is resistance at times to coming up with a management system. Um, I have run into people who say, but when you tell me I have a system, there's no outside the box thinking for me now because I have to I have to operate 100 percent in the way our, our system is operating. And I could understand that. But when we talk about safety, we're, we're, we're probably not thinking about outside the box thinking when it comes to safety to safety too much because we're trying to eliminate hazards, not trying to come up with uh, different ways of operating the same way while not controlling the hazard. We're just going to run it a different fashion out there. And the legal compliance side then. So uh, it would be it would be awesome if everybody was following the law at all times. It's really hard because it doesn't mean that you're not 99 percent good. And darn if uh, the one time when something happens, um, somebody somebody's there to see it that, you know, so it's, it's really hard uh, to always uh, do that. And so basically, in a nutshell, to wrap up. Um, um, the uh, podcast here. ISO 45001 is designed to help the organization create a safe and healthy workplace. So we're going to sit down, identify the hazards. We're going to mitigate those hazards out there the very best we can. And like all things, we're going to do the plan, do, check, act. We're going to plan out what, what, what we're going to do. We're going to do it. Then we're going to check on the progress and then we're going to act on the results. That's also a very nice way of thinking about continuous improvement. You're just always working on uh, something. Typically, um, the higher hazards and working down to um, um, the lower hazards. That is it for episode 70. Uh, just a very brief overview on what ISO 45001 is. Um, I think it's a fantastic thing. But in following on um, podcast, we're going to talk about both the positive and the negative aspects out there and then afterwards after we've we've, we've kind of done a couple of these introduction uh, podcasts we'll sit down and break down the um, individual uh, topics and inside and then at the end we'll talk about wrapping it all up together so uh, episode 70 uh, what is ISO 45001 is complete my name is Dr. David Ayers thank you for joining me and have a safe day